The Land Before Time 150 million years ago, the landscape of southeastern Colorado was completely different. Gigantic dinosaurs roamed this land, leaving tracks in the ground of a muddy lake bank that eventually hardened and preserved itself for us to observe today. I took an 11 mile round trip hike to the tracks and along the way, I discovered that I was walking in an open air museum. There was ancient rock art, rock walls, and ruins of an old mission along the way. That's a hunter right there. I just talked to him. I was just asking him, hey, have you seen any petroglyphs? And I saw, he said, you know, no, I haven't seen any. I've been looking for deer all day. But right where we were standing, I saw this little kind of trail. Looked at this rock and I said, hey, might as well check to see if there's any here. And sure enough, there are. So a little detour from the dinosaur tracks that I'm trying to go to. Wow. able to stumble upon these. These aren't marked. I just had a hunch. Anytime you see a big rock like this, it's basically just a big canvas thousands of years ago. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. I'd love to look for more, but we gotta stay on schedule, everyone. We don't have that much sunlight left. Still got three miles to go. A little less than three miles, I think, at this point. Hey everyone, I just have a quick 15 second ad read that I wanna do for my book. I'll have you right back to the video in just a second. This is my book, Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History. It'd be a great way to support the channel. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video and I'll have this linked in the description and the comments. Thanks. Here's an old rock wall. Not too far from those petroglyphs. Wow. I bet you this is old. This is probably really old. Yeah, you got a little camp right there. Let's go around. Okay, I'm gonna check this out real quick before we get back on schedule. You can't just not look for this stuff when you're out here. This is amazing. Okay, how do I get around this rock wall? It's entirely possible that maybe some like Spanish sheep herders that lived out here hundreds of years ago maybe made it, but. This is old. Here's some more petroglyphs. Oh wow, oh wow, this one's really cool. I've never even heard about this one. Here's some more too. These are ancient. These are extremely old. You can see this part of the rock is completely eroded away where they would have traced through. I am really enjoying Picket Wire Canyon. And I haven't even got to the dinosaur tracks yet. All right, unfortunately I can't stay very long at these petroglyph sites. I gotta keep going. The goal is to see some dinosaur tracks. The land before time. That's the Purgatory River right there. We're gonna follow 
of this as it meanders through the canyon. So I'm going to tell you all the story of how the Purgatory River supposedly got its name. The Purgatory River starts up in the Spanish Peaks and drains, I think starts in between this West and East Spanish Peak, drains out into the East Middle I think North Fork of the Purgatory River. They combined somewhere just outside of Trinidad, Colorado. And this entire area in the 1600s um, was being occupied by the Spanish conquistadors who were in search for gold. The mountains that the Purgatory River come from are actually called the Sangre de Cristos, or the Blood of Christ. This was named by the Spanish conquistadors uh, due to their color the way they would turn the colors at nighttime as the sun was setting on them. They give kind of a maroon, you know, blood-like color. Anyways, the Spanish were there to search for gold. And the story goes that they had enslaved a group, a local group of Native Americans to help them extract this gold. After terrible treatment of the Native Americans under their captivity, the local priest had decided that they couldn't support this behavior. And they told the conquistadors, I'm out, I'm going back to Mexico City. They left, went to Mexico City, the conquistadors stayed, and soon after, uh, they died. Um, they went missing and were presumed dead. But the legend goes that since they did not have a priest, to absolve them of their sins, to confess their sins to before death, that their souls were damned to purgatory. So that's how the Purgatory River got its name. Whether that story is true or not, I'm not sure. But when you Google the Purgatory River, or the Highway of Legends, these stories come up quite a bit. Uh, I used to go to the Spanish Peaks quite a bit as a child. And that's always one that I remembered. I almost missed it, but this is an old homestead. The ruins of an old homestead. Sheep or cattle herders that lived all the way out here, completely off the grid. Probably only went to the markets a couple times a year. Most of the time they were surviving out here. Pretty incredible. Rest in peace, Eugenio Padilla. These are the ruins of an old mission. Following the acquisition of the territory south of the Arkansas River by the United States in 1846 through the Mexican-American War, numerous Mexican migrants moved northwards. Damascio Lopez and his group of 11 families were among these immigrants, and they founded this initial permanent settlement in Picket Wire Canyon. Rest in peace. Died in December of 1895. This was their land. They lived here. So much respect for all who have homestead out here centuries ago. Rest in peace. And then Lucita. Rest in peace. These are beautiful headstones. 1899. The 1890s was a 
very tragic year for this family. Can't imagine how hard it was out here. No antibiotics. Really rough winters. This right here is not a rock. This is the fossilized bone, shoulder bone of an apatosaurus. I'll throw in a picture of what an apatosaurus looks like so we can get an idea, but wow. I knew there were bones out here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to see this. I didn't know where this was. The Comanche National Grasslands are huge. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to see a lot of what it has to offer today because I mean, that would take multiple trips. It's the largest track site in North America. They are. So cool. Wow. One hundred and fifty million years ago, southeastern Colorado was a tropical climate with dinosaurs roaming the land. The Apatosaurus and the Allosaurus have left remnants of their presence in the ground with over 1,900 footprints that have been preserved in the rock. The location of the tracks was previously a muddy bank of a lake during the Jurassic era. Today, the Comanche National Grasslands host North America's largest dinosaur track site, which are found along the shores of the Purgatory River, forming over 130 trackways. This might sound corny, but I seriously almost lost myself staring at these things, contemplating just how much time has passed since their creation until now. In the grand scheme of things, our life here on Earth is a blade of grass on a football field. So many epics, eras, and life has blossomed and died here on this rock that we call Earth. I was so excited to be there that I started to lose track of time. Before I knew it, the coyotes were howling and the sun had started to go down. I still had five and a half miles back to my vehicle. With the howling coyotes getting closer, I grabbed my sidearm out of my bag and started the long hike back. Beautiful. All right. Gotta get back now. Got 5.1 miles until the trailhead. Coyotes are starting to howl. Heard quite a few earlier. See how close they get. Still got over four miles to go. Beautiful moon tonight. 3.9 miles away. We got this. lying if I said it wasn't spooky out here right now. I think I'm about three miles away. 
made it back to the car. It was 12 miles in total. I think it was over four and a half hours of hiking. Today I actually did um, probably more around 15 to 16 miles of hiking. I was in Vogel Canyon for a while too. So I'm beat. I'm ready to go back to the hotel, get some sleep. It was a little spooky out there when the uh, sun went down and it got really dark. But once I kind of got in the groove, it's actually very peaceful. The stars are incredible out here. The moon was really nice. Um, some coyotes did get pretty close to me at one point. I felt like they kept coming in and out, in and out. There was probably about 15 of them. That sounded like they were 50 yards away at one point. That was spooky. Um, I do keep a gun on me out here just in case. Uh, but luckily nothing happened and it ended up being a beautiful night. I was running on empty, so I went back to Lahana, Colorado and stuffed my face with tacos. Lahana, Colorado, baby. Shut this place down tonight. Thank you everybody so much for watching my videos. That was a lot of fun. I'd always wanted to go there. I grew up in western Kansas, not far from where those dinosaur tracks are in eastern Colorado, so I'd always wanted to go there, and I'm glad I could share it with you. If you'd like to support my work, please consider buying my book, Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History. I also have a playlist called Enigmatic North America, where each chapter is detailed as an episode. I've been all around the United States, Mexico, even parts of Guatemala to document some of the burning curiosities that I've had about some of the stories you hear, the legends, the oddities, the controversial history of the Americas. I have over I have 23 chapters and over 240 pages in that book, over 240 photos, many of them that I've taken myself. And I'll have that linked in the description and the comments section. If you all could please like, subscribe, and share this video with someone you think might find this interesting, I'd really appreciate that. Until next time, take care.